Welcome, Allison. I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm excited to chat with you. And, and before we jump into things, we're going to be talking about integrating social justice into your business. But before we dive into that, I would really love it if you would share with the audience a little bit about how you got into your business and doing what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me. Um, I worked for the Canadian federal government for a little over a decade, and I was looking for something creative to do on the side. I started writing as a mommy blogger, and I met people in the digital marketing sphere, and I basically ran away to join the circus. <laughs> and it was the best decision I ever made. Um, I've been in my business for four years. Um, you wouldn't think that working in the prison system would prepare you for marketing, but there was a lot of transferable things like around data analysis, around developing information products, around promoting um, initiatives and shaping them. So it it did actually end up very relevant. And, um, and it's just been a different way that I can make a difference because a lot of the projects that I work on are really toward service. So it's really exciting. And I love that you said you ran away and joined the circus because I think I think as entrepreneurs, a lot of us have that moment where it's like we, we quit, walk out and figure it out. Right. I, I like literally went from like one day I was, you know, analyzing prison incident data. And then the next day I was running YouTube for a tiny donkey in Ontario. <laughs> so like. Wow. That is a big leap. <laughs> Different pens. <laughs> yes, very much. That's amazing. And oh, go ahead. Yeah, it was. It's definitely been um, a big leap in a lot of ways, and then also it's been really. Uh, there's been a lot of really familiar stuff because I've gotten to work. I worked a lot in on indigenous issues within the federal government, and I've worked on a lot of indigenous projects as a marketer. So. Um, it's been nice to have some common threads and some like really different things. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to integrating social justice into business, I know I know for a lot of business owners, myself included, we kind of feel like deer caught in the headlights, and we don't we don't know how to start. We don't know how to make it work. So how why don't we start with like what what is social justice integration with business? How do the two integrate? Um, well, a lot of people come to me often with similar questions and they, they question whether they should at all, whether they have any place to be speaking on it. Um, but the reality is, is that the way we feel about the things that are happening around us um, tell a lot about who we are to our clients. It lets us share that we we care how they're feeling. We care about their experience. Um, it's like having situational awareness and empathy um, about what's happening. Um, and I mean, really, it it starts with making a statement about what it is that you believe. And I guess before you even get there, it's really taking some time to think about what is it that you believe? What is it that you stand for? And doing that inner work because there's a lot of pressure from a lot of different places. And it's important that when you make a statement that it's really true to you, because you build trust when your statements match your brand experience. So if the brand experience that people have isn't consistent with your statement, then they're going to lose trust with you. So being really clear on your values before you share them is important because then it lets people get to know the real you and then they can make a decision about if they want to work with you and how they want to work with you based on that. I hear from some of my clients on this where they say like they, they know what they believe, they're very clear on their values, but they're afraid to, to take a stand for something because they're afraid that they might alienate some clients or they might say the wrong thing. And I'd love to know what you hear, what you think about that. What I tell them is that if your clients get offended by that, then they're not your clients. They're really not for you. Um, yeah. How do you, like, is there a way of navigating that? Or is it just, you just accept that some people aren't going to agree? Yeah, I mean, there will be people who won't agree with you for sure. Right? As, well, as soon as you take a stand on anything, there's going to be people who don't agree with it. And some people will 
not agree with you, but respect that you took a stand and will still want to work with you. Some people won't agree with you and won't want to work with you. But when you take a stand, all sorts of people who didn't know you felt that way are going to see you. And they're going to say, I want somebody who cares about uh, people come to me and say, I can't, I want to work with someone who cares about inclusive marketing, Mm -hmm. or I want to talk, I want to work with people who cares about the status of women, or I want to work with people who cares about indigenous people. You know, um, it brings your people forward and it helps you find alignment with people and, and even deepens relationships with your existing clients. If they didn't know you felt that way and they have a connection to it. Then there's something else that you have in common. Right. So definitely like you may lose business, you may gain some business. Um, but ultimately you're showing up as who you are and letting people make a decision and you're letting people into your world. And the reality is, is that people do care about this stuff. Now people care how you feel. They're looking for a diversity statement. They're wondering how you feel about key social issues. And if it's easy to find somebody who they align with, then that's the decision they're going to make. So you need to make it easy for people to identify you as someone who they're aligned with so that they can pick you, basically. That makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. And when you talk about, you mentioned a diversity statement. And as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I don't have that. <laughs> how, oh, do we, how do we begin to find one or create one? For sure. Um, often it's a, it, it could be in your about page. Um, and it could be like a paragraph in there or even a really detailed sentence um, or it could be a separate page of copy. Um, I usually encourage a separate page of copy because for me, like I know there was a lot of templates floating around back in May, June, July, where people could copy and paste a diversity statement for their website that basically was like, I'm one of the good guys. Right. And that's you know, all well and good. But if you can't explain it, if you can't explain how it relates to how you operate your business, if you can't explain how it relates to you, then it's not as helpful as it could be. I always encourage people in their diversity statements to be really specific. Who are you looking to include? Why? Why is it important to you? Who are you supporting through your social give back? If you have like a one or two percent pledge that you're making, like where is that money going? What accountability have you built into yourself? And what kinds of policies and procedures have you implemented in your business that are inclusive? And so that people could look and say, oh, I have these needs and this person can meet them. These are the steps they've taken in their business so that I know that I can access their services. Um, so that's why the more general boilerplate statements can be more difficult because people don't really know what it means and they don't know whether they know you have good intentions Mm -hmm. um, but they don't know how that translates to how accessible you are to them and they don't know what your what your personal connection is to it and and what you care about personally so I always shoot for giving people the opportunity to provide more information so that people can can get into your head and your heart and see where you're coming from. And even if people don't agree with you, they might see that you've got a good reason for feeling that way. And at least then you have some empathy and you have some ability to connect. Definitely. And when it, when it comes to deciding, I guess, what those policies would be um, for diversity statement, you know, I would think like, I'm a, I'm a solopreneur. I'm, I'm a one woman show. So, so in my mind, my mind goes to, well, that would relate differently in my business because I'm not hiring. Um, but would that then be about, you know, maybe the services that I use and, and who I do business with to support my business or, or how would I begin to connect that with my clients to know that I, you know, that I'm, I have diversity yeah. among my clients even. Yeah. So, I mean, part of it is like, do you use diverse suppliers? Like even looking at your tech, like. Are you using black founded tech tools? Um, are you, what are the beliefs and feelings of the people whose um, tech you're using? Like ConvertKit, their CEO bought out all sorts of billboards for BLM and placed them strategically, like out of his own pocket. He went and did this so that people knew how he felt. And it, it really angered some folks. But it also, I mean, like I'm doing my email marketing and that's who I want to go with because I know he 
my money. I'm voting for something good with my money. Yeah. So, so it's around suppliers. It's, it could be around policies around like whether children are okay to be around when you're doing coaching. Like it could be around um, your payment plan policies. Um, in some instances, people will make decisions that their payment plans don't cost more than their regular services paid in full because people of color have often had less access to capital. So they end up paying more money for the same services that people who have more access to capital um, can pay in full. So that's yeah. something that some people will implement in order to create more equitable access. Um, and and they do that by saying like, hey, this is the reality. I'm, I'm a one woman show and I need capital. So if you can pay up front for a year, that would be super helpful. And this is, you know, all of the things or you can if you come to people with authenticity and honesty and, and explain, then then that's one way to approach that barrier and, and being able to encourage people to to pay if they can up front as much as possible. But yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of different ways. And then there's also like if you have scholarship programs available or if you have a sliding scale available or if you um, are like trauma informed in your approach. And recognizing that certain communities have different relationships with trauma and in terms of prevalence in their experiences. So there's lots of different ways that that uh, social justice can be integrated into the like the day to day business of your business, not just your marketing, but just actually how you operate. That just gave me so many things that I need to look at in my business. And I think for everyone listening, they're going to have the same same experience. Cause I'm like, I don't know who owns the companies that I use to run my business. Like all the tech stuff. I don't know what their beliefs are. Um, yeah. And um, Heels is um, a feminist business uh, consultant in the area and she has amazing resources. She's the one who educated me about payment plans. Yes. Um, and so it's definitely, she's an amazing resource for finding ways to be equitable in the way that you're running your business. Yeah. And she's, I follow her on social media and I learned that from her too. And she was, it was a post she did. And I thought, Oh, I've never thought of it that way. Okay. I need to restructure things. Um, because I've been at times in my life where I I've had no money or I've had very little money and then having to pay more to get the thing that I need is, is really frustrating and it's defeating and it's, um, and it really isn't fair. It feels, it feels very, like, okay, I'm struggling financially and, and now you're going to make it even harder for me to get what I need to get because I need a payment plan. Exactly. Um, no, and I sure. never thought of it in business until I read one of her posts and I went, oh, okay, I need to do this differently. I'm not okay with that and what that means. For sure. Yeah, she's so brilliant. I really admire her. Mm -hmm. Me too. I, I really, really respect her and look, look up to her quite a bit. Um, so when we're you know, in, in doing this as a business owner and we're starting, we're looking at creating content, you know, mm -hmm. with, with this in mind, how do we do it in a way that doesn't sound like we're a bandwagon jumper? I know this is, this is something that crosses my mind because I go, I don't want to look like I'm just doing it because it's trendy or because it's yes. being talked about. And I want people mm -hmm. to know this is how I really feel. And so how do we do it in a way that doesn't look like this is just the, the trendy thing to talk about? For sure. I mean, it's definitely in consistency. So in when you're building out your content plan for the year, think about what are the relevant awareness days? What are the relevant holidays? What are the relevant seasonal topics that relate to your business? Um, and look at them through the lens of different customers with different experiences and make sure to integrate their perspectives um, and acknowledge the dates that are important to different to, to communities that maybe you don't necessarily belong to, but um, your customers do, um, to show that you care about the things that they care about. Also making it really specific, like that it isn't just like, oh, I posted a black square, I'm good for at least, you know, three crises, right? Like really being clear about like who you are and what you believe and, and how you feel about it and what you, what you want to do to contribute to making things different. And really that's mm -hmm. the other piece is that like your content should reflect the actions that you're taking. 
right? And that's part of your diversity statement is talking about the changes that you're making. Well, that's something you can share in your content. That's something that you can say, hey, I made this step in my business. This is something that I changed. You know, I'm pleased to announce that, you know, X, Y, and Z policy have changed for these reasons. And then that's, you know, increasing access. That's making your clients' lives easier. And it's giving you something to share as well. But really looking at, and even looking at the images that you use, because there's like a a bit of like a whiplash associated with like, well, I definitely need to make my website look more diverse. I'm like, well, if that isn't reflective of your client base, then, you, you know, your cart and your horse are in the wrong order. And what, where we need to focus is like outreach and looking out maybe why your client base isn't as diverse and what kinds of things you can do to change that. Um, so that doesn't give the impression, like, so you're not, you're not faking it, right? Because when people realize you're faking it, then why are they going to believe the things you say too? Right. right. So really being as fun as possible and, and making sure that it reflects the true diversity and what you are actually qualified to do. Like you don't want to, if your restaurant is in a second story walk up, then you probably don't want to feature photos of wheelchair users who can't get into your restaurant right like yeah really being thoughtful and making sure that you're not including diversity for the sake of diversity and that it doesn't relate like it should be more than just feeling good it's also about like the reality yeah but yeah so consistent authentic and specific content can really help in order to show people that this is really how you feel and this isn't just a trendy thing that you're doing because everybody else is doing it and really letting people experience it through your brand. I mean, that's, what's going to be the most impactful. I mean, you can say all sorts of things and you can post all sorts of things, but if people don't feel welcome, then it's not helpful. And what about, you know, and, and I know I've, I've felt this way quite often is like, is being a f- people who are afraid of saying the wrong thing. So having good intentions and wanting to make a statement and take a stand, but having that fear too of what if I say the wrong thing or use the wrong language or end up causing more harm and like, and my, my personal feeling is that, you know, we're human, we're all going to make mistakes. And, you know, especially as we're learning, um, but any, anything on that and how we we navigate through it? Well, I mean, it's helpful to, reach out to people who belong to the communities that you would like to be supporting um, and compensate them for their labor as they look at things for you and talk to them about how it feels. Cause sometimes we use language that is meant to include people that makes people feel very excluded mm-hmm. and you use it and you think you're doing the right thing and you're not even aware that people are like, Oh, yeah. right. Like, I, that's not that person's not a safe place for me because they use language that sounds nice, but it's really kind of coded to, to be something entirely different. Yeah. Um, so taking the time to to consult with the people that you're looking to include and make sure that the message that you're sending is as intended, and ensuring that you're compensating their labor is really important. So they're not. You're not further victimizing people. You're not further imposing. Um, just coming from a place of like authenticity. And I mean, if you're nervous about saying the wrong thing, like, I mean, share that too, right? Yeah. You can say, I'm coming to you here. I've seen these things. This is what's on my heart. Um, you know, these are the steps that I've taken to try and make sure that my message is clear, but I'm only human and I'm showing up the best I can because. The reality is, is that like racism kills people and it's not a good enough reason to not do something that you're afraid. Like that doesn't cut it. Like people don't get to opt out from the consequences of racism because they're afraid. So we need to step up and do our part even while we're afraid because that's, that's the reality that other people face. Yep. Yep, I agree. And, you know, my, the way I've kind of handled it, and I don't know if this is right or not, but just sharing what other people have said, and just sharing that to my social media and giving them credit for it. Um, 
And then I feel like I don't, you know, as I figure out how to say these things, my own words, just directing them to other people and, and posts and saying, this is, this is Mm -hmm. stuff to go read. Yeah. Amplifying other voices. Um, There's an initiative um, called pass the mic where people with platforms can lend their platforms to other people so that they can speak and be heard on their topic. So maybe you don't know what the heck to do, but you know that you can help a woman from that community um, be heard. And that's your action at that point. That's your, like, you trust your social media and your website to share your message about your products and services. Like you believe that those will sell those things. So there's no reason why those same channels can't promote other things that are, are meaningful. Um, even if you feel like you have a small following and you're just one person, like if you believe in it enough that you think you can make a business out of it, then trust it with this too, because it's, it's worth it. Yeah. I, I like that. It just gave me an idea for like, even just having guest bloggers come in, right? mm-hmm. People come to your website and you have someone's blog, a guest blogger on, then you're bringing attention to what they're talking about and who they are and what they can offer. For sure. Yeah. I've seen clients do that really effectively. Um, and in terms of like really using user generated content from a variety of people with different backgrounds and experiences can be really helpful so that people see themselves in your products and services and, and it gives a different perspective on things like the things that you appreciate about what you do might not be the same things that you're clients from different backgrounds might appreciate. So it gives a chance for someone else to hold a mirror up to what you're doing and explain and also share about the things that are important to them too. It can be really great mutual aid to be able to provide, to to amplify their efforts in the world in relation to your efforts in the world and, and everybody wins in the end. Yeah. And so what would you say would be a good starting point for a business who's you know, they're listening to this and they're thinking, okay, so what are my first steps? Where do I start? Um, I would take a look at your assets, like your social stream, your, your website and, and look at it and be like, this is how I feel. Could somebody coming across this tell, like, can someone, would someone coming across my website or my social feed know what it is that I care about? And if not, those are the places to start. So you start small with a post, you start small with, you know, integrating a um, a diversity statement. Um, you start small by putting a land acknowledgement on your contact page that acknowledges the territory that you're operating on. Like these are all steps that you can take, adding it to your email signature. Um, like there's lots of different small steps that you can take as you're figuring it out and and do your research. I mean, I think sometimes we feel like these are difficult conversations and they are, but we can still be prepared for them. And so that's like listening to podcasts, that's reading articles, reading books. I always get that. Well, I don't have time to learn about racism. And it's like, I'm an indigenous woman. I don't have time to experience it, but here we are. Yeah. Ooh, I don't have time to learn about it. Oof. And like, and I get it. Like, we're all busy people, but like, put on an audiobook while you're making dinner, yeah, right? Or like, there on your walk to school, or what? Like, there's ways to find time for the things that matter. And if it's something that matters to you, then find ways to access it. And, and you know, it might be, you know, five minutes a day, or ten minutes a day, or you know, an hour on your Saturday, or something, right? Like, yeah, but it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like a master's level study by next weekend. Mm. It's what you can manage and what you feel good about and what, what you feel like you can be proud of. And, and just recognizing that we're all coming from it from different places at different times. And we all have, even when we have the best of intentions, we've all come with these beliefs that we've been raised with that we may not even recognize. So that's not like a, it's not a personal failing. That's just an area for growth. 
And that's, I mean, that's why I try to work with people from a place of not shame, because mm -hmm. it doesn't help anything. It's like, you can do hard things and we can do hard yeah. things together. Yeah. So that's, that's how I try to work on things because we can sit in shame and spiral forever, or we can, you know, take a step and, and even if it's a tentative kind of scary one and, and yeah. move forward. Absolutely. It's, you know, I, I always tell people it's like we're we're fish in water and we don't know how to describe our own environment. So we've all been raised in our own environment, our own conditions, and and this is stepping out of that to see the world through a different lens. That you know, and it's not like you said it's not about shame and it's not about you're not a bad person. Um, it's just your experience in the world is very different than another person's, and so opening up to understanding what that experience might be like for someone else. That not everyone has had your your upbringing, your you know the the things you were exposed to as a child. Like not everyone has had that, and so understanding that everyone's coming from a completely different model of the world, with different beliefs and different parents, and raised in a different environment and a different culture with different strategies and different opportunities. And so it's yeah, really just understanding that we we grew up in different environments, all of us, every single one of us grew up in a different world. And so being empathetic to that and understanding that not everyone's experience is going to be the same and listening to that experience. For sure. And also, I mean, there's like, even our industries carry norms that are, you know, pose barriers, like things that are industry standard are, we're now starting to look at being like, do we really have to do that? Is that really necessary? Is this actually how we have to do things? Can we do something that's different? You know, and, and even in like the way that you provide advice to clients and your content, like I remember reading this article recently about this woman who paid off like $60,000 of student loan debt. She's like, if I can do it, anybody can. And I'm like, go girl. And then I read and there's just like, so then my dad gave me a house and then I rented it out and moved in with my grandparents. Mm. And then like, there was all of these things where I was like, so anybody can do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyone, anyone can do that. Yeah. I don't believe anybody. I'm like, well, of course. Why yeah. didn't I think to rent out the house somebody gave me and live with somebody else for free? Like, <laughs> that's what I did wrong in life. <laughs> you know, anyone in in those yeah, circumstances, like, anyone in those circumstances, right? Can do it, but unless you have those circumstances, that's not feasible. I remember yeah. you know, I was in personal training talking with one of my, I used to train a lot of seniors and I was talking with one of my senior clients. She was in her seventies and she was like, I don't know why you young people can't buy houses and why you, why you're all in debt. She's like, when I, I graduated university and I took a $10,000 loan and bought my first house and paid off that loan within two years. And I've been mortgage free ever since. And I was like, that's <laughs> not, that's not the world I grew up in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so it's really being like, and I mean, those are like fairly obvious examples, but there are other things where, you know, it might be that, you know, even looking at like one of my friends has a decluttering business and she wasn't sure how social justice integrated with that. And I was like, well, okay, talk about like housing security, like, and the ability to accumulate things and how it's not really a thing when you have to move all the time. And you know, um, getting rid of things can be scary because you can't replace them because you don't know where the money's going to come to. So, right. so these are all things that we have to think about. I mean, she's amazing and she's done lots more study beyond our work together in order to understand how to offer those services in, in a way that respects the, the backgrounds of all sorts of other people. But yeah, it's really when we sit and look at the work that we do through an intersectional lens, sometimes things that don't seem like social justice issues really are when you really sit and think about it. So when you think that your business doesn't have anything to do with justice, then often it really does. Yeah, well, I know I know, I have a lot to look at after this conversation that you've opened my eyes to things in my business. Where I was like, oh, I didn't really, like, I never thought of that. I never thought of a of a diversity statement. I hadn't even, I hadn't, honestly, I hadn't even heard of that before. And now I'm thinking, well, uh, of course I need one. Of course, yeah. I need what I do and, and taking a clear stand on 
you know, not just in my stories on Instagram, but on all my platforms and on my websites so that people know who I am and what I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely have work to do. Well, and I, I mean, I think we all do in lots of ways and we, you know, and that's just something that we're, it's not a point where you can be like, well, social justice has been integrated. I'm good. Check yeah. that off my box. Now I can move on to curing cancer. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> it's never going to be done. Like the things around us are going to change. And this is something that's a practice. And, you know, and and in being a practice, so we're not going to get it right the first time. And we have to give ourselves grace that we're going to learn, well, that didn't work. And these are some things that I can do instead. So Absolutely. yeah, it's, it's definitely, and I mean, and the reality is, is there are people who track things. I found this amazing spreadsheet of all sorts of tech companies and it was, have they made a clear statement? What percentage of their employees are black? Where does their corporate giving go? What commitments have they made? Are they upholding them? Like, it was really detailed. Wow. I was like, yeah, people are watching. And they want to know what you believe and what you're doing about it. And if you, you're walking the walk. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important because, you know, as business owners, we are leaders and we're called to that. And we need to set a good example and, and show up as best we can in that way. So I just, I think it's important because people are watching and, and we want to inspire people to do do good things with their lives and to make our communities a better place. Cause we, we all go into this hoping that we can make somebody's life better. Absolutely. So, yeah. so if somebody wants to work with you or learn more about how they can work with you, um, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, my website, alisontedford.com is where you can access. I have a personal blog. I have business services and I have my books that are coming out. So you can get information on all of those in one place. Perfect. And I will put the the link and, uh, and your social media links as well in the comments or in the, um, you know what I mean, in the, in the show <laughs> notes. That's what I'm looking for. Those are the words. So everyone, so you can connect with Allison and find out more about what she does and how to work with her. Thank you so much for coming on today. I learned a lot from this conversation. And I really appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you so much for having me.